Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing with your hosts, Glenn Thayer and the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young. Well, folks, welcome back to another podcast. Tom and I are sitting here and, you know, we got a, a message from Tracy, who's one of our podcast subscribers. And what she wanted to know is, is how often should I be adding new content to, to my site, to my blog? You know, how often is too much or mm -hmm. too little? You know, what's the, what is the right mix? So I, I think today that's really what we're going to look at is we're going to look at content. How much is too much? How much is too little? You know, what makes, you know, what makes Google tick? What lights Google up as far as your SEO rankings? What, what should we be doing? So let's just start out with the, the, the big question. How often should we update content to our website or our blog? Well, I think if you've listened to the podcast enough, you know what I'm going to say. And, it, it, and the answer to that is it depends on your strategy and it depends on the goals for your website. Now, what we can say is that um, content is exploding on the Internet. I mean, just when you think that there wouldn't be more content on, on the web, there's more websites and more availability and more people posting content, whether it's on Facebook, on their Facebook page, or on their website. Now, we tend to focus more on, on business websites, so you know we can focus on that. But really, content um, can be distributed all over the web through different types of outlets. And so the first question then is, what is the strategy around the site? And then to be thinking about the pros and cons of how much content. You certainly don't want to do too much content. If you do too much content, then you know people just don't have a chance to get to it. It's, it's overwhelming for them. They'll start to ignore it. But if you don't do enough content, you get forgotten. And, and we know uh, one of the points that I want to make in this podcast today is that Google is now really rewarding fresh content. And in fact, um, you're going to see a huge trend, not just with, with Google, but with any type of, of, of uh, content-based site, blog or Facebook, social networking. New and relevant content is going to get the site better rankings than tons of old and stale content because there's a lot of websites out there that really aren't doing anything. They're just online brochures that have been up there for years, maybe a new little piece of content's added once every six months or something. And Google's basically saying to the people of those sites, you're not as relevant as you used to be, <laughs> but people that are posting new content are going to be more relevant. Um, and yeah, so we'll, I get into kind of some rules of thumb here when we, we talk about some specific sites. Well, we, you know, we bring up the, the good content, that, or not, <laughs> you bring up a good point. There, there's two different things we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. and, and this is something to, that we, I think we really need to clarify for our listeners is we have websites and blogs. And those can, they, those can be the same thing, and those can be two different things as well. It depends on how it's set up. From a blog standpoint, there's a, there's a difference with how often do you update your blog versus how often do you update your website. Yes, and I would, I would suggest, you know, as a rule of thumb, you know, if you just have to pick something, if you have a website, let's get a new article on that website once a month, maybe twice a month, you know? Um, but in that article could be an, an email newsletter that's, that's posted to the site or whatever it is. If it's a blog, it needs to be more frequent and probably as a rule of thumb, once a week minimum. Um, but depending on the kind of business you're in, you might want to blog multiple times per week. Now, be careful if you start to blog every day because if you start to blog every day, then you're starting to cross the line into you're really not so much um, – a business website as you are a journalist. You're starting to become a journalist. And that's a different strategy from just having a website where you want to talk about your products and services and talk about the industry. And the the, the downside of, of blogging every day or posting every day is that you just will start to get ignored because you're really not a journalist if you're doing website marketing for a small business and, and your your target market's not necessarily going to perceive you as a journalist. So there'll be a disconnect there. And the other part of this is you want people to look forward to your content. So if you're blogging and posting every day or multiple times a day, people aren't going to look forward to it. Now, there's, there's, I'll give you a couple examples of this. I, um, I love a guy called Seth Godin. If you guys – I probably talked about him in the pod podcast before. Seth Godin's great. But he blogs, he, he blogs and emails every day and, and most of the times multiple times per day. And I've been following him for some time now and it's – it's getting a little bit overwhelming because um, I feel like I I don't want to miss what he has to say, but I feel like now it's kind of hit and miss. Like 
the really good nuggets of information show up maybe once every four or five blogs. And so it could be easy for, you know, Seth to get lost in my inbox. And before you know it, I'm not following him like I should be. Whereas if he did one really good blog, maybe twice a week, then I would be like, oh, cool. Here's one from Seth. I would have checked this out. This is great. Now, don't you think that maybe Seth's – because I, it, there, there's two – I think there's two angles with Seth. There's, there's a strategy. There's definitely an SEO strategy that's, that's, that's with this. Yes. If you're blogging every day, Google is saying, hey, this guy has fresh content every single day. That's relevant to what he's speaking about. It's relevant to the rest of his website. So he's going to get some top rankings when it's coming to marketing and when it's coming to you know Seth Godin. You type in Seth, it's probably in, in Google. You're probably going to pull up his blog. That's right, and, and that is true. And his blogs are relevant, and and so forth. But I, I just think for the average user, you know, it's every it is, day it is, or multiple times. No, it, it is too much. I and mean, what happened? I mean, if you really look at it, if you look at some of those, uh, some of his new websites or websites, his new blog. He has short blogs. I think people think that a blog post has to be lengthy and it has to be a novel. Realistically, your blogs really should only be 250, 300 words at max. Yeah. People don't have enough time. So when you're looking at content, you want that 250, 300 words to be relevant, hit the point, and drive your point home. Then it's like, True. oh, this works. Seth's one that he has, I think today, is called No. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sentences. Yeah, I like the one from today. And the ones that when I see the longer ones, I kind of say, oh, no, I got to come back and read that. But, and, 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 you know, you mentioned limit limitations on characters. Well, Twitter is obviously the leader in that area. And I think that, that Twitter is also an area where people can overdo it. I follow um, two Steves, Steve Martin and Stephen Colbert, I follow on, on Twitter. And, and I actually, when I first started following them, I just really thought they're, they're, their postings were really funny and engaging and so forth, but they're posting several times a day now. So I'm not able to follow all of their posts. And actually, I, I kind of just stopped reading them because there was too many of them. So I, I think there has to be kind of this happy medium between what is too much and what is too little. Well, let's just go back to new content. Let's just talk to, con talk to content specifically. I mean, let's look at from a content standpoint. Sure. You only want to blog when it's relevant. Right. And I think this is – I think if we really focus on blogs, you know, we talk about upsate, uh, updating website content. That might be pictures. Here's a new page. I think once a month for that is probably a, a really, good, a really good, uh, good way rule of thumb. Right. When we start looking at blog content, blog content is, what, is what's going to get people to identify with your brand and interact yes. with your brand. and Well, actually, I should, shouldn't say that because people don't want to interact with a brand. They don't give a crap about your brand. <laughs> uh, and, that, and that's the truth. They want to interact with people. They want to interact with a human being. And so if you have somebody who might be your director of marketing that's running your blog, they right. want to see that person's face. They want to know who it is. And it's like, hey, this is Bill. It's Bill here, and this is what's going on today. Let me tell you about something funny that happened at, at the office. Mm -hmm. And your blog post might be something that happens that, you know, oh, I totally forgot to, you know, I, I hit send and it went out to everybody. You know, I see yeah. way too many people. And this is the fallout, but this is how we corrected it. And it might be a PR nightmare that they're sharing with you that they had. And this is how you can now take that PR nightmare and not have it happen to you. Right. It has some end result for the listener. There's an end result, uh, end result benefit there for the listener. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, we, so we look at it. That's so the blogs are really where, where you're going to be getting that content. Now you, you look at Google. I mean, what's Google doing now? I mean, you mentioned that they're, they're punishing the sites that, that don't have new content. If you have new blog content, you always be relevant. And yes. And so, uh, you know, you, you look, okay, how do you, you know, we talked about this before and uh, before the podcast, we were talking about how do you deal with keeping up with content? Because I think yeah. we're so busy, blogs don't make, it, don't make money. Let's, 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 let's put it from a, I'm, I'm going to talk two different ways. You mentioned jour from a journalistic standpoint. From a journalistic standpoint, if you're blogging every day, you're going to make some money because you're going to monetize it using advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is one way to do it, and there are a lot of blogs, and there's a lot of people on YouTube that they make a million dollars a year just doing crazy videos. Right now, that being said, as a business person and as a business, you're you're probably not going to be monetizing your blog. You're either monetizing your product or your service, and so looking at it that standpoint, how often how difficult is it to come up with content? 
Because this this yeah. is where we get stuck. We get stuck in going, how do we develop content? So, Tom, how do we how do we come up with saying, okay, we have content. Maybe we sit down and we write 10 blog posts in this three-hour period. Now we have yeah. 10 blog posts, but should we go out and put those 10 blogs online? It's a really good point that you're making. In fact, I just had a client ask me yesterday um, – you know, is anyone going to read our blog? <laughs> is anyone, why are we doing this blog? Is anyone going to read it? And I said, well, let's put it this way. Google will love the blog and love the new content. And also, if somebody does read the blog, there is a high degree of interest there. So there's a lot of upsides to doing blogs. And I think that absolutely the big issues come into, into playing what am I going to blog about and who's going to do it? Who's going to write this content? And um, there, And because of those issues – some things can happen, like, for example, you can have long gaps of time between blog postings. In fact, that happens to us with these podcasts where we, you know, here at Intuitive Websites, we get busy with client work, and then we don't have time to schedule the podcast time. So um, you have to be disciplined about doing a blog or content for the web. It's, it's really a form of sales and marketing. Just like salespeople used to pick up the phone and, and call prospects, now you've got to get on your computer and write content. Well, you if, you, if you do have a gap, though, I wanted, and this is a question that Tracy, our listener, asked. If you have a gap, do you post-date content? So if you have a gap of two months you know, and you didn't get anything done in September, do you go back and post-date it? You know, I think that that's okay as long as – Are you talking about going back and, post and saying this post is, it, fr is from September instead? Yeah, yeah to, so you don't have huge gaps of time in your blog posting. And this is what I told Tracy. I said, you know, it, it depends. I'm okay with doing it if you're not – really a journalist type blogger if you're blogging content just to keep content going in your industry or whatever i'm okay with doing that I, I think that wordpress still allows you to post date a blog just don't go back too far i mean you know be reasonable with how you do that wouldn't it be easier just to sit just to go in and say hey we've been really busy here here's what we've been up to absolutely why that's a gone. great option and too. Then, yep and then all that content instead of putting it back because then it says oh well i missed this if you do have dedicated followers they're going to notice that's right. That's the and, other part of that is people will notice, well, wait a minute, I was on this site in September. I didn't see anything there. And I didn't there. see anything. Now, if we, now you, can, you can, like I said, post date. You can say, okay, well, I want this blog to post next month. And yeah, I want this can, to post yeah. in two weeks. So you can, if you go – Predate and, it. That's yeah, predating it. Setting it to post it. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you, if you go back and say, okay, I write those 10 blog posts and you have that content that's solid, just start coming out with a release schedule and say once a week we're going to release this blog on this date this blog on this date, this blog on this date. And the cool thing is if you're using some of the Twitter tools, I know we're kind of getting off on the thing, but if you go Twitter tools uh, like uh, Ho Hootsuite, you can do the same thing there and you can schedule the post in Twitter. You can schedule the tweet to say, hey, new our new blog post on the five essentials of internet marketing. That's right. And, and Absolutely. then you schedule that. And that comes out at the same time, you know, a, a little bit later, maybe an hour after you've posted that new blog post. So now you're sending it out to all your followers and you're getting kind of a double whammy at the same time. That's true. And I'm sure that, that some of these folks like Seth Godin have to be doing that because they're off presenting or speaking and then they've got, you know, five posts showing up while they're out of town. So, um, yeah, and, and, and keep in mind, too, that any time you put new content on your website through a blog or a website page. Not only does Google love it, as we said, but it starts they, – they become landing pages. And what we've noticed over the years in our, in our data, website data, is that the home page is, is becoming less and less of a landing page for websites, especially through the search engines. Because Google is getting really smart at saying, you know, what's the content on this website and what's the most relevant page? And it's probably not going to be the home page. And so it's not uncommon for us to have a client that might get 10,000 visits a month to their website, and only one or 2,000 of those are landing on the homepage. The rest are landing on these other pages. So every time you create a really nice, relevant content page, it has a chance of being a major landing page for your website, and that's a great thing. You want to see that. Well, you know, another thing is, is uh, video, too. You know, this is something we don't want to discount video because a lot of times people say, I don't want to write a blog post. I mean, how often do we sit back and say – it's just too much. But yeah. if you were to turn on your camera, most laptops these days have cameras built into them. It's true. I think video and audio. I, and I know that there was actually a post from Seth a while back, and he, he said, you know, really the best way to go is written content. That's what people want. That's the best way to go. 
And I think that's a great way to go. And But I also think that video and audio is a great way to go. And I think audio is still kind of an untapped resource on the web because people can multitask while they're listening to audio. They can listen to audio while they drive. They can listen to audio while they're doing other things. Video is more difficult. It, video wants your attention, and it should be brief and engaging. And so that's somewhat yeah, challenging. The, ca- the caveat to video, though, is really the sweet spot in video is is you know one to two minutes. Once you're yes. past the two-minute mark, if you're under two minutes, you can look at a YouTube video and you say, I've got 90 seconds. I've got a minute and a half. I can yeah. watch this. You don't have two and a half minutes or three minutes. It's true. Absolutely. And, and that's the way you're looking at it. So as a blog post, that's a different – blog posts are the same way. It needs to be scannable and quick and easy. But you bring up that point with audio, you can listen to it in your car. You can listen to it at the gym while you're exercising. There's so many different places to go. True. Now, now we talk about writing the content. How, how, do, we, how do we collect all the content? <laughs> yeah. This, so you know, we've seen this over and over with our clients is they try to find someone on staff to write their content. Sometimes we write content for them. And, you know, the challenges are really that some people just aren't good writers, you know, that just haven't really been trained in writing. So you need to find someone that's been trained in writing and, and hopefully trained in writing for the web. So they know how, to, know how to be brief and succinct and so forth. And you just have to be disciplined and schedule it. Um, I wouldn't be afraid, though, of going to an external person to write content. I mean, don't feel like it has to be somebody that's, um, that's there in, on your staff. There's been, you know, it's it's interesting. I had a, a conversation with a, a colleague of mine in Vancouver about two weeks ago, and he does a lot of social media and a lot of blogging. And, right. And I said, well, how do you go about it? What's your process for your blog? He says, well, what I do is he's like, I don't write. I have a hard time sitting in front of the keyboard and, and writing content or even jotting it down. It's like what I did is I brought a marketing intern into my company, hmm. and they took notes while I spoke. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then what they did is they got all of the salient points that he made and put it into a blog post, like wrote it into a Word document that was 250, 300 words, and then gave it back to him and said, proofread it. Make sure this is what all the content is. As soon as he approved it, now he has a new blog post. Uh, Yeah. Another way. That's a great way to do it. Yeah. Interviews. You have someone interview you or you just do a brief session on a whiteboard or whatever. Great way to get the content out. It's an easy way. Now, if you do have a lot of content, one other way that you can do it too is for those that like to carry the uh, voice recorders. Okay. (laughs) If you've got a voice recorder. Which is everybody's phone now. Which which is everybody's phone. You can do that on your phone too. True. Just speak into your phone. All of the content that you want to talk about. You can say blog post one. Boom. Here's what this is. Speak into your phone and and then send it to a writer too. And you can send it. There's this new website that I found out. It's called castingwords.com. Oh, that's great. And it's, okay. Uh, C A S T I N G W O R D S dot com. Castingwords dot com. It's a transcription service. And what go. they'll do is you send it online to them, like MP3 file or whatever it is, they'll convert it into a Word document for you and send it back to you. So mm-hmm. now you don't have to worry about, okay, well, I need to hire somebody and you do this. It's like, this is. When you need it, here you go. They charge, I guess, a permanent basis or whatever it happens to be, however much audio you have. Yeah. So, you know, if, you do, if you're doing something like that, you don't want to sound like you're rambling. So do an outline at least or do a do – a, do, you know, point – get your major points listed. And then when you – as you start to dictate to like a castingwords.com, you know, organize your thoughts so that they make sense and you're not rambling and it sounds like you're just talking – and one last thing as far as the content, what type of content should be on the blog? Because this is always a big thing because you, you have uh, – within a company, there are several different dynamics that you're dealing with. Some people say, okay, well, it just needs to be sales and marketing material on a blog. And, yeah. And I – personally, I think that that's not the way to go with a blog because you want to see kind of behind the curtain on what's going on. Yeah, so, so this is a good question. So if, if you're in a business and you're, you have a business-focused website for consumers or, or B2B, Think about if you had a, a journal that was named after your company. So if you're ABC Company, let's call it the ABC Company Journal. You know, fun and interesting facts and events from ABC Company. <laughs> and then just if you were to see that journal filled with content and information, not only about what's going on in your company, but what's going on in your industry, in your marketplace, with customers, with the service, with the products, that you could fill volumes of a journal. It's you know, and, and we, we go through our normal day, our normal work day, 
And just in that eight-hour period, there's probably enough content for dozens and dozens of blog posts. But it's just the idea now of seeing that you have this internet now where you can spread this information to the world. It doesn't have to stay just inside what's happening in your office. It can be spread out to your target market, and they'll find it valuable. They really will. See, now, you're, now you, you've just thrown an idea my way. When I was in Vancouver uh, two weeks ago, I, I was up there speaking on a speaking engagement and had an opportunity to go there. One of the receptions was at the Underground Circus. Now, personally, I'm afraid okay. of heights. I'm, yeah. I'm not a big heights person. And what they did is they said, hey, let's go play on the circus equipment. So I was up 30 feet in the air on all this circus equipment and doing the Cirque du Soleil type things, having my – legs hooked up on these straps and hanging upside down 15 feet swinging in the air all these pictures were taken of me and now blog post is okay what is what does glenn do when he's not speaking or he's not doing podcasts or he's not doing that there we go it's like here's a glimpse into me facing one of my big fears and then just relating that to stepping out of your comfort zone to do something different yeah so it is if you had the you know glenn the glenn the glenn thayer magazine what would be in that magazine and that's what makes up your life and your 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 business and your business dealings and your your interests and so forth. And and if it ties in to the needs of your target market and how they relate to you, then that's valuable content and it's real important content. That's what these these content leaders are doing. People like Seth Godin, that's what they're doing. And you're getting a little peek into their lives instead of saying, Okay, as an author, here's the content that I speak on and I'm just blogging on that, he might go Hey, you know, I was at the store the other day, and this is what I found. And here's an experience and how to relate it. It's the only way we can do. It's the only way we can communicate is via the personal experiences in our life. So, if that's the way it is, then that's what you need to talk about in your blog or on your website. Absolutely. So, what are uh, what are some of the key action items for the listeners for for this time around? I know we kind of went on, and there's a, a lot of different ways that you can go with this, and I'm sure we could probably talk easily for another hour on on content, but. Uh, for the purpose of kind of aggregating content for, for blogs and websites, what are our key action items? Well, I think you, you made a really good point, Glenn, and you've got to decide – the listener of this podcast has to decide how can they get content onto the web. Is that going to be them using castingwords.com? Is it going to be them using a marketing intern? How are they going to get that done? So figure that out first. Then start scheduling and writing contest content-based site uh, or content-based – um, articles for your website. Now, when you do this, start with just the titles. Don't feel like you have to write 600 words on something. Just get the titles down. What are some interesting titles? And to do this, start keeping notes of interesting things that happen uh, during your work day or your work week. And um, you know, if, if possible, find two or three of the most interesting things that happened that week with you, and 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 jot it down as a note, and then come back and turn that into a blog or a podcast using using the the system that works for you, whether it's, like I said, castingwords.com or whatever. And, um, and, and keep in mind that content does come in a variety of sources from an email newsletter to a video to an audio to photos with captions. Photos with captions are great content pieces for social, social media, for websites, for blogs, whatever it might be. Uh, so use a variety of content sources. Um, as always, track your results in Google and in your in your rankings in Google and in your web stats. And then go back and listen to some of the other podcasts that we've done on content. They have some really good kind of uh, background information on content on the web and, and some real good fundamentals on, on writing content. And, and don't forget, last, last but, but not least, is don't forget about YouTube. Google owns YouTube. That's a very good point. And so yes. when you do video and you've got that short 90-second video you're putting up – Make sure you tag it with, with what's appropriate. I mean, don't populate it with tags that aren't relevant because that will be the first thing your viewers will see is, oh, I searched on marketing. I found this. You're trying to sell me a vacuum cleaner. That's and right. It's not <laughs> working. Well, That's awesome. True. Well, thanks so much for joining us, folks, and uh, be sure to tune in for our next podcast here with Intuitive Websites. Thanks so much. This has been an Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. For more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitiveblog.com. If you have a website you'd like us to review or an issue you'd like to see covered in future podcasts, email us at info at intuitivewebsites.com.